Lisa Mulcahy, a marine biologist and educator with Reef Keeper Belize, based on beautiful Tobacco Key in the Southwater Key Marine Reserve near Dangriga. And this is Alexander Moore, Reef Keeper's assistant educator, and... I'm Amory O'Brien, host of DIY with Ames and Savage Unicorn YouTube channel. We're, We're here to, to take, take a dive into undersea Belize. Belize. Gary, the Goliath group are our mascot. You'd normally find him near the mangrove keys in southern Belize, sitting in one place hoping to catch his next meal. Goliath groupers need our help for its protection since it's an endangered species that can grow up to eight feet in length and can live more than 50 years. In fact, based on his size, Gary is a youngster. I'll be back a little later with your activity to find out what you have learned today. So make sure you pay very close attention. The marine environment is part of Belize's cultural heritage. Looking out over the beautiful Caribbean Sea, we see coral islands or keys, mysterious mangroves, and peaceful seagrass waving in the sea. And we have corals that make up the Belize Barrier Reef, part of the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef. Each habitat is home to a myriad of life, both seen and unseen, each interacting together with their environments to form a marine ecosystem. Without each piece of the marine ecosystem, the environment falls apart. Let's explore together the amazing environments and discover some cool facts and impress your friends and family. Isn't it great? that Belize has the second largest barrier reef in the world and the largest in the Western Hemisphere? Yeah, man. The jewel is just amazing, isn't it? Very amazing. I've always wondered, are corals living? Are they rocks? Are they animals? Or are they plants? Well, you're right. Corals are living, and we're going to learn a little bit more about that when we go to our next section. Most of us are familiar with coral reefs, for example, the Belize Barrier Reef and the Great Barrier Reef. But how many people know what coral is? Is it an animal? Is it a plant? Is it both? Those of you who have guessed that it's either a plant or an animal are partially correct. Coral has small, microscopic plants that live inside it that give the coral its color, green, orange, yellow, brown, or purple. These microscopic plants are called zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae, or Symbiodinium, and they're really an interesting example of symbiosis, which means two things working and living together. So a reef is made up of corals that look like rocks, but they're alive. The outer surface of the coral is covered with tiny flower-like polyps, and actually they're related to jellyfish and anemones. These polyps catch their food by stinging, just like jellyfish do, but the polyps also lay down the rock that forms the reef. Each polyp makes up the limestone structure that forms a coral, and when corals grow upward, they join together to make a barrier reef. Reefkeeper Belize loves the reef. How many people eat seafood? More than just a home for food, the reef does many wonderful things for us. Hey, what's your favorite kind of seafood? Well, I like shrimp and lobster, and you? I love a nice lobster, and I love a nice snapper, especially yellowtail. Well, I love fish also, especially in soup. Aha, fish tea. Mm. You always got a hook with, with a piece of wire and a swivel. Then you tie it on the line. When you tie it on the line, you set a sprout on the hook, and you release it in the water. And at the same time the boat is moving, the barrel see the sprout glittering in the water and eventually he grabbed it. You don't pull at the same time he grabbed the sprout. You release a little bit of line. Then from there when you, when you see it, you release some line and you see the hallway, they have it more or less. About three yards, I'd say, you know, just pull it as hard as you could and from there you, you catch the barrel. That is the art how you do it. 
Patrick may move from one fishing technique to another, just as often as he may move from one fishing location to another. Other times, he drops his line in specific areas inside the reef where he catches snapper, jacks and several other species which are sold on the local market in Belize City. Fishes move on the tide and so Patrick and his team spend their days and many nights fishing their favorite spots and filling their ice chests with fish. We should probably give it a big thank you. Like a big apartment building, it houses a lot of life. Fish, crabs, shrimp, and other things that live on top of the coral, like sponges, marine plants called algae. As Belizeans well know, it shelters us from hurricanes and tsunamis, and the reef is very popular for tourism, with about 45% of Belize's economy coming from marine tourism, like diving, snorkeling, and sport fishing. But if you love corals and you think fish are exciting, like we do, you should know that we wouldn't have any of that without the mangroves. Mangroves are special trees that are adapted to life in salt water. They adapt to their environment by having special pores for taking in air. In addition to removing salt, mangroves are great catchers and filters. All those roots, they clean the water of floating debris, remove pollution, and clean sewage. You heard that right, they can get rid of human waste. Although that does not mean we want to throw waste on the mangroves. What makes mangroves so mysterious? The tangle of mangles, which is what a mangrove forest is called, houses animals such as the American saltwater crocodile and boa constrictors. But beneath the water, there are otherworldly creatures and plants amidst the roots. Without these root hiding places, small fish and invertebrates, animals without backbones, would not have a place to shelter from hungry predators like the barracuda or barrow. In fact, more than 70% of all reef fish species depend on the mangrove environment to start their lives. Without these special places, we would have very little fish to eat at all. Mangroves and mangles form the keys, islands held together, made of bits of coral, often held together by the dense prop roots of the mangroves. These dense prop roots are called prop roots because they prop up the tree and also act to trap sand, reduce erosion, and buffer waves and hurricanes. Keys, islands where mangroves are removed, are lost or shrink. Tobacco Key in the Southwater Key Marine Reserve has shrunk by a third. Caribou Key has shrunk by half. And poor Manowar Key, where the frigate bird's nest, is almost gone. Between the keys and the corals in shallow water, waving slowly back and forth, seagrass meadows spring up. Seagrass meadows are where the iconic manatee or sea cow feeds slowly munching up to 100 pounds of seagrass per day. Hey, Gary. Hi, Emery. I've been wanting to know this. What is a no-wake zone? A no-wake zone, Emery, is a special area in lagoons or rivers designed to protect manatees. The captains must go slow in these areas so that they don't hit the manatee. Once they hit the manatee, they can kill it or injure the poor manatee. So you've got to be careful in those areas. You've got to look out for these signs. They're always on the sides of the lagoon or the river. It says no wake zone. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for that helpful information. Thanks for the question, Emery. Also, the beautiful Queen Conch eats the slime and the plants that grow on the seagrass, and of course, sea turtles chomp it just like an underwater lawnmower. You can see areas where turtles feed regularly because the grass will be short. Seagrass is just what you think it is, but did you know that seagrass actually flowers underwater and gets pollinated by currents instead of by bees? Belize has several types of seagrass, but the most important and most common are the manatee grass and turtle grass. All of the blades of the grass act to slow down currents and help to clean sediment from the water. A lawn of seagrass is actually called a meadow. Instead of cows grazing, you see parrotfish munching, eagle rays sifting for clams and other invertebrates, and barracudas patrolling for prey. Without seagrass, the coral would not be able to get the light it needs. Seagrass traps the dirt just like a carpet or rug outside your house and slows down wave action from hurricanes. Actually, how many of you have a rug outside of your door to trap the dirt before you come in? 
seagrass does just the same thing. Activity, Activity time! time! Hi guys, this is Gerdy Grouper again. I have two activities for you guys today. The first one is um, an activity to see how the mangroves can survive with a lot of salt. So for activity one, you will need a small bowl, half bag of salt, and an area where it's moist enough to put your experiment. It's either in a veranda or in your kitchen. You're gonna record what you see every day happening in the bowl. What do you think is gonna to happen to mangroves if they couldn't get rid of the salt, right? So you're gonna record your activity and take pictures of it. I have another activity for you guys. For activity two, we're gonna use one measuring cup, one teaspoon, and one six inch spot in your yard. Each day in the morning, when the sun is hot, we're gonna mix one teaspoon of salt in the cup of water. We mix it properly. After mixing it properly, we're gonna take it to the six inch spot in our yard. And we're gonna pour it on that six inch spot every morning when the sun is hot. After you record what you see every day happening to the spot for one week, seven days. What do you think would happen to the mangroves if they couldn't get rid of that salt in, in their trunk? I'm going to tell you about a few of the incentives we have for you doing the experiment. You can get your pictures posted on our Facebook page at Reefkeeper Belize, or you can create a YouTube video of your experiment pictures and post that on YouTube. The first person to get the correct answer will win prizes and surprise prizes. So now I'm going to get into the quiz. Question one, is coral an animal or a plant? Name five living creatures found in the reef. Question three, choose the mangrove, seagrass, or reef. List three things about why each habitat is important. Be sure to answer those questions and visit our Facebook page, Reef Keeper Belize, or post on YouTube, and you'll receive prizes. Our super fan of the episode wins a free trip to Southwater Key Marine Reserve with the rest of the other students. Hey Marie, isn't the ocean amazing? It is, I learned so many new things. That's cool, what'd you learn? Well, I learned that coral reefs are actually living creatures and how they protect us. I also learned about the mysterious mangroves that work as a home for many of our creatures and they also create islands. I also learned that seagrass provides food for many different types of animals and it keeps the reef clean. Tune in for episode two when we will be talking about how we as humans connect with and affect our ocean. Did you have fun? I sure did. I hope you guys did too. Thank you for watching!